Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in again this week. I haven't done a lot of filming of all the jobs that I've been up to in the garden over the weekend, largely because it's things I've all filmed that I've been doing before. Um, so what we're going to do this weekend is we're going to go for a little May update of the cut flower patch and we'll have a look at the plants that I've been growing on to go in there as well. Uh, and then I think next week we'll do the same with the cottage garden. Um, give me a chance to do a bit more weeding in there. <laughs> um, there's still lots of jobs that I haven't got to in the cutting garden, but that's reality. You can see how far I've got and what I've still got to do. And sometimes it may even be that those jobs don't even get done. Um, let's go and take a look and see. Okay, so we just take a look at some of the plants that I've got hardening off. So what I'm doing is I put them in the greenhouse at night and then bring them out during the day. Um, and I'm not bringing them out into direct sunlight. So let's flip around and have a look at those. Okay, so the reason we harden plants off are to get them used to the elements. It's not too much of a shock. So they're getting used to the wind um, and a little bit of rain and all the things that go with being outside. But they're still in the safety of their pots, if you like. Um, I tend to try and do the hardening off process for about two weeks, but you've got things like this here that have actually already been planted out and they've been dug up and potted on again. So that is um, my poor phlox cherry caramel here. It got so decimated by slugs. It's been dug up out the cutting patch and put into pots again. And the same happened with the Orlea. So that's been really, really nibbled. I think there's one that's only got like one leaf left on it. Uh, but um, uh, potted it up again and we'll let them just get a bit stronger before they go out. I am really impatient. I tend to put stuff out when it's still quite small. Uh, perhaps I should grow it on a bit more first. Uh, I've also got my dahlias hardening off. Okay, so these dahlias are the dahlias that are being grown from tubers. My dahlias that are being grown from seed and cuttings are still in the greenhouse because they're not ready to start tolerating this wind. A um, couple of dahlias here and then my mint pots. I keep my mint in pots because I don't want it to go wild. So we've got chocolate mint pineapple mint, um, spare mint, and apple mint, and that's really easy to grow from seed, all of that. Um, and then in the greenhouse, we've still got um, some scented pelagonium cuttings, um, some things that were only potted on yesterday, so they have not got rooted the pot yet. So I, don't, I won't start hardening them off till I see they've started to root the pot. Um, so some dill and some salvia there. Um, I've got some little nasturtiums that I've started from seed, um, really cool colours and they're just for some little pots in the garden. Now I don't know about you but every year I try very very hard not to have the May-June gap of flowers and um, so year on year I keep adding to the um, varieties that I grow to try and fill that gap in. And I've got to say, I still have not cracked the May-June gap. My ranunculus that I'd autumn sown looked brilliant. Um, and then I had some spring sown ones as well as anemones. But as I showed you, the vole, if you remember, got into the low tunnel and ate a lot of the corms. So uh, the amount that I had planted and the, the pathetic amount that I've got left has really made me rethink that a little bit as well because... The fact the corms have been eaten means I can't even replant them in the autumn to grow again next year. So that money is lost. So whether or not I think about growing ranunculus in crates as well, that's um, something I'm considering. Um, so flowers wise, at the moment, I've had per early perennials, which I don't have a vast amount of flowering. I've had aquilegia. Um, my Casmacia, um, thank goodness. Um, I've got a few alliums that are just starting to come into flower now. Um, and the Sweet Rocket is just starting to come into flower and the Dianthus won't be long. But none of it's flowering at the same time. So if you're like me and you do 
arrangements and bouquets and things it's not a lot of good if you've just got one variety at a time so i've really got to try harder for next year i'm thinking about long term so it wouldn't make a lot of difference for next year but i'm thinking about a few of the shrubs that flower in may and june so lilacs snowball bush a few things like that um, i've got peonies but they're going to be a few years before they flower i've got two in the garden that have budded up um, but it's not going to be you know there's about four buds on there um, so anyway if you have any more suggestions for me for the may june gap um let me know i definitely think i'm going to do more alliums next year um but I, I anyway i've managed your expectations let's go into the cutting garden and see what is actually growing in there i'm sorry if the sound's not very good today it's really quite windy um this rose down here I'm pretty sure it's pretty dead, so I put a few sweet peas just there. Um, I do need to feed all my roses, especially the ones in the cottage garden, because they're all looking a bit unhappy this year. So I've ordered some organic feed, and hopefully that's arriving today, so I can do that. Uh, my cola plant has got lovely new growth now. Um, this is a red rose, which looks quite healthy. Got a lady's mantle there. Um, and then past the bird bath, the sweet rocket is just starting to flower now. There was a lovely um, butterfly having a little feed on here earlier. Um, and then these are all Dianthus cuttings that I haven't pinched. So they're all like one long stem. Um, but when I cut that stem, hopefully I'll get a second flush of those in the autumn. Um, but then I've got the original plants that I took the cuttings from, which obviously have got more stems that we'll look at in a minute. So this is more dianthus cuttings. Um, foxgloves. These are all apricots. Um, my first year trying Canterbury Bells, and I'm afraid I haven't got a lot to show for my efforts. Um, so that's um, a biennial will definitely be sowing, and biennial sowing will be happening soon. Um, we've got beginning of June is going to be a mix between biennial sowing and dahlia planting out. So um, stay tuned to the channel. There's lots coming up. Um, these are some wallflowers that I was hoping were going to fill in my May June gap because I planted them in the autumn, and they didn't. Uh, and there's a couple of dianthus that I sowed in the autumn last year. Um, which again aren't looking great. The raspberries, <laughs> look at this. I mean, you can use this foliage in bouquet, so it's actually really, really useful at the moment. And I've got a few strawberries in here as well. Obviously, just flowers at the moment. But flowers are good. Flowers hopefully means fruit if I beat the birds. Um, and then down here, this is a different type of raspberry. It's a, a really contained, it's really good for containers. Um, valerian there, and again, everywhere I look, everyone's valerian is flowering. Mine is not. Um, a lupin that's been a little slug snack. Um, these are a really dark gladioli in here. Uh, my blueberry bush, which I probably should think about netting that this year because I always forget, and the birds always eat all my blueberries. And I don't know if you looked at my um, willow coppicing over the winter and it looked awful what I did chopping my willow down. Um, if you saw that video, don't panic. Look at this. All new, healthy, vigorous growth. Oh, and look at that. The sign of a healthy ecosystem is having tons of green fly everywhere. To be fair, I don't mind the green fly being too on the willow so much because I don't use the willow leaves at all I only use the willow in the winter so if the green fly want to hang out over here that that is <laughs> that is makes me happier than when they were on my roses I think we'll have a look in a minute but I think they have vacated the roses so perhaps they decided the new willow growth a bit better uh, and there's a couple of willows there that I didn't chop so they're a bit taller 
Um, this bed here is party annuals. So, Auric there, um, Cerinthi, a few cornflowers, a few that were pinched and a few that weren't. So, obviously, that one with a flower bud wasn't pinched, and these ones down here were. Uh, scabious and lavateria. Um, we do do Nomo May in areas, which I'll show you in a minute, but we don't do Nomo May in here because I need to walk on the paths. But I mean, it's not like we haven't got any buttercups or daisies um, in the field there. Uh, but we do have a Nomo area, which I'll show you. Um, okay, so in here, you can barely see the dill, but again, I've got more dill in the greenhouse. It is there, it's just, um, you can't see it very well on the miscanthus background, but there's a dill and there's his neighbour. And then we've got Ami Magus here. Um, they're looking quite good. And then Bapurum, and I've got a few spare Bapurum as well. Um, and then this is just weeds down here. Um, but this is where my Dorcas will go. So that will all, all the weeds will be cleared off here. And I've got the white and the red Dorcas in the shed, but they're tiny, tiny. They're nowhere near ready to go out yet. Okay, I confess. The long bed along the edge of the cutting garden that I was just gonna cover crop this year and I wasn't gonna plant out. Well, you know where this is going. It has in fact been planted. Oops, I definitely grow way too many things. Okay, so this is the long bed. It was just supposed to be cover cropped, but it does in fact now have um, Ami Magus down here, looking lovely. That's great. And then followed by some dill, which you can just see here. And then followed by some more salvia viridi, which the reason I've got loads of salvia viridi is actually it's for my friend's wedding where they're having like blues and purples. So I'm growing tons of that. And that's why um, calendula, to be honest, these are just self-seeded calendula that I just planted here. So I'm not even sure what colors they are. Auric, I love, um, so that's great. I know it's self-seeds everywhere, but you know, it's fantastic um, foliage in bouquets. Some more self-seeded calendula that I moved to scabious. I didn't have quite enough to put a hole there, but I have got more kicking around. And then this is what I was actually supposed to do. This is my tiny bit of cover crop. Um, so that's buckwheat, and that's what I should have put in all the way along. But instead, I planted it. Um, and I'm not even sure I've given this bed long enough to be weed free. So if this gets really weedy, I've got nobody to blame but myself. So we will see. Um, poppies here. Um, I'd love the seed heads. I don't use the flowers. Oh, and look, I even forgot about this. Oh, they've rooted in. That's a pot of Ami Magus, which are just in a round pot and they really should have been potted on. Um, oops. And then uh, Nigella here, that's all midnight, I think. And again, that's a bluey purple and that's for my friend's wedding as well. Um, pile of soil, that is basically coming from um, where I'm edging the bed and I'm digging a ditch and I need to do it. That's the only that I've done because it's not a very fun job, but I need to go along the edges of all these beds on the grass. Um, and then what I'll do is I will cover this pile um, with permeable cover so the moisture can still get in. And then I'll have some lovely topsoil, which I'll be able to use um, next year. I've done it before and it works really well once the grass and weeds have all rotted away really handy to have um, then we've just got some composting going on here um, some more composting um, so I don't know if you I don't know if I had a chance to show you my little compost base so there they are um, and then cold frame 
these are things that are pretty much ready to go out. So the status could go out, um, the straw flowers could go out, these scabies could go out. The cosmos is have to wait a little while. Um, Hearst Low Tunnel, got anemones here. Um, they luckily didn't get eaten. Big bear patch, they got eaten. Um, some ranunculus, these were spring sown ones, so they haven't started flowering yet. And then my autumn sown ones have now got to the point where they've just sort of gone over. So this tunnel will be zinnias. When these are all done, this will all be zinnias. Um, and then the tunnel behind me, which is, uh, I don't know if you can really see in the tunnel. Um, I wonder if I go down the end. Um, obviously, I'm filming through net here, so it's not ideal, but this is pretty much all stock, apart from at the very end, there's a bit of phlox. Um, and this will also be zinnias um, when the stock are finished. So here we've got my sweet peas. Um, these ones that are just budding were the autumn sown, um, and they were royal family mix, that's why it's red, white and blue. Um, whereas pretty much all the others that are spring sown are all going to be like purples and blues and maybe some whites. And again, it's for my friend's wedding. I've got some Greek cress of sown down here. Oh, a bit of bitter cress. Oh, I missed you. Come out. Um, and then I've just got a few calendulas on the end here. Oh, sorry about my shadow. And these tiny little things here they're just here until they grow a bit bigger and then I'll move them I've got three and they are a hypericum where I was in a garden and I love the colour of the berry and I just asked if I could take a few berries to sow the seed and I'm really surprised but I didn't manage to get some to germinate but there'll be a, there are a few years off having a useful crop um, so again this is all just sweet peas and I've got a row of nigella turn around and this is the discus which it might seem a bit early to be planting it out because it's half hardy but can you see how the bottoms of the leaves were turning purple i always think that's some sort of deficiency and i have been feeding them um, so i just decided perhaps it was just time to get them in the ground um, so fingers crossed that was the right call on those um, I just threw a load of poppy seeds in here. I could probably do a bit of thinning out. Um, along this edge here, I need to weed that and I'm going to just chuck in some Alcamilla mollis seed and see what happens. These are my very young peonies. So, you know, I'm expecting in five years time, they might be useful. Um, you can use the foliage of peonies as well, by the way. So if you think, oh, they only flower for a short space of time, maybe they're not worth it you know this foliage you know obviously imagine this is a big bushy plant it's got that lovely color to the stem really nice leaf shape um, they're an investment for the future um, a couple of fox i don't know what these fox gloves are what color they're going to be it's going to be a surprise uh, and then i've got um ladies mantle along here uh this is a bit of a shame it's uh a breezer patch with a big patch missing, um, which is a bit annoying. Snapdragons here, these are all looking really good because they have been pinched, so they're all branching out really nicely. Are you, oh, maybe you, maybe I missed one, but I'm not going to worry about that now. The larkspur need pinching desperately because can you see they're all just growing on one long stem? I really want to pinch them so they branch. That should be a job I should probably do this weekend. And then I'm having a bit of a problem here. This is my first year growing penny press, and I read not to pinch it, so I didn't. The trouble is now it's bolted, so it's tiny with these tiny little flowers on. So I don't know if that means it's ruined. Um, if you know the answer about penny press, because I've grown the Greek crest before, which I'll show you in a minute, which is fantastic. But yeah, first time with this one, and I think I might have messed up. Um, then we've got some very teeny, teeny, tiny um, amaranthus here, that's hot biscuits. And then this is where, under the carpet, there'll be more amaranthus. 
it will be amaranthus to the end of this bed. That's other carpets just keeping the bed safe. Oh, there it is. I was trying to find the helicopter. I could hear it. So this bed is just waiting for dahlias. This bed is waiting for status and straw flowers. Uh, so these are the roses which are planted in the autumn, so they're teeny tiny roses and what I need to do is just come and snip off all the dead wood here and if there are any little buds, um, like the little bud here, I just need to come and snip them off because we just want these roses this year to concentrate on getting their roots in the ground. Um, I'm afraid I can't remember what the varieties are because I know I had one variety substituted so it wasn't even what I ordered. Um, but they're, they're growing on quite nicely. There's lots of new, healthy, vigorous growth, so that's a good sign. Um, so yeah, we just let them. This year, we're not expecting to have any flowers from them. They'll just uh, grow on and do their thing. Um, it will be tempting for me to plant along the edges here, but I won't. This will be daffodil bulbs will go in here, um, but I won't because they need good ventilation. Um, they're young and they're growing and we want them to to have air so they don't get all mildewy or anything like that. Uh, their larger friends are behind them. Um, so these ones here are Champagne Moment. And I don't know if you remember in my last tour, they were covered in green fly, do you remember? But as I said, I think the green fly have vacated them in favor of the willow. So. Do you know how people say it's good to have a good variety of things growing in your garden? Well, I think this is surely why, because these were absolutely covered in green fly in my last tour, I think it was. Um, but they're looking pretty clean. And actually, to be fair, I wish my cottage garden roses looked like these guys. Um, I wonder if sometimes in my cottage garden it's a bit too sheltered and they don't get enough airflow, whereas this is really open. Um, so anyway, these are great. If you want a good cutting rose, I'd really recommend the Champagne Moment. However, this one, although I love the flower to bits, um, Jour de Ver, this French, I'll try and write it in if I remember. Um, they're beautiful, beautiful flowers, but we are seriously talking buttonholes or really short stemmed arrangements, jam jars, things like that. You're not really going to get the stem length for bouquets. Um, but again, they're looking really good. Um, all my pots I'd placed out to show me where my dahlias have gone have all been blown all over the place. And the buckwheat I planted in here has basically been food for the birds. So not a single bit of it came up. Heck of a lot of weeds in here, but there's no point in me weeding this until I'm ready to plant it. So what I will do is weed it all off. Then hopefully I would have shorn my sheep. I need to arrange shearing my sheep at the beginning of June. Then I'll lay, once I've weeded it, I'll lay fleece down, um, just like you see the fleece here for the roses. And then I'll plant my dahlias into the fleece. Now, for all of you that they're going, oh, that's a really good idea because it will stop slugs. It really does not stop slugs, okay? I find slugs nestling quite happily under the wool. You know, they think it's lovely because it keeps everything underneath moist. But what the reason I'm using it is not as slug control. It's a slow-release fertilizer, slow-release nitrogen. I'll link my video about sheep wool in the description um, but the reason I'm using it is really as a weed membrane and um, stop the weeds and also to hold moisture into the soil so I'm just hoping I'll be able to get my sheep shorn in time because it's much easier to put the wool down first and then plant into it than add the wool after um, so fingers crossed for that um, this is my Greek cress um, which I'm hoping is going to go to seed but still be green in time for uh, some DIY wedding buckets I've got. Um, um, but you see, this is what I mean. Look at the height of the stems on the Greek cress compared to the penny cress I just showed you. So I'm really, really hoping that um, 
the penny crest isn't ruined. Um, but I'm hoping some of you might be able to help me out on that. Anyway, just absolutely beautiful. I love this. This was autumn sown. Um, and you can just see when the flowers fade, you get these beautiful little seed pods. And it just adds that really whimsical, airy element to flowers. Um, I love it absolutely love it. Um, my irises are not showing any signs of flowers just yet but they're still alive so I'm pleased because these are the ones that don't like it too wet and I am on heavy clay um, so I was a bit worried about them but they they seem okay so that's great. Oh, a bit of weeding while we're here. Um, Casmasias. These are first year Casmasias so I've basically had one flower off each plant but I'm glad I've got them because they're definitely one for the May June gap and as the years go on they'll only get bigger and better and have more flowers um, and again it's my first year growing this it's a type of allium um, tiny little white flowers but I love growing detail it's those little things that you don't get in flowers in the supermarkets those fragile little things so Again, I think um, these will only get bigger and better as the years go on. Um, although I could probably do a few more because there, there's not, I put 50 in and there's definitely a lot of gaps. There's not 50 there. Um, second succession of Larkspur here, so they're still tiny. A few more layer that survive and haven't been completely eaten. And then some teeny tiny Rebecca Saharas in here. Um, perennial grass is here, although I think this one on the end might be dead. Oh, hang on, is that new grey? Oh no, I'm pretty sure it's dead. This was a Korean. Um, oh yeah, it's definitely dead. Okay, that's a shame. Um, but the, 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 here, there's one here that's alive, and there's one here that's alive, despite the forget-me-not growing through it and the um, aquilegia. Um, so these are the perennial breezer here. Um, and then you're going to ask me what this is called and I cannot remember I will put a picture and name up this is like a pink um, spire um, and it's a brilliant cut flower but I, yeah I cannot remember what it's called uh, my sedums here and look I, I always take a gamble um, and because sedum is really drought tolerant I just um, cut some bits off and stuck it in the ground and I did it about two maybe three weeks ago and I think they might have rooted um, so I did that with all the varieties oh look at this weed in here though try and get the weed out so I did that with th these are all different varieties so that's a pink that's a white and this is more of a burgundy so what I did I took two cuttings of the burgundy and put them here and here two cuttings of the white and put them here and here and two cuttings of pink that poor one there hasn't got a lid but he seems all right so um i'll try anything once look at that that's worked doesn't it well anyway um and there's loads of baby gladioli in here because this used to be a gladioli bed um oh and there's a non-baby here but i don't think that's too much of a problem we'll oh there's a few more i missed we'll just take them up after flowering um Really teeny tiny Estrantias, um, and I think I've lost a couple. There's a tiny one there, but there should have been one there and there, and there's not. Teeny tiny baby Phlox, um, slightly bigger Estrantias, but really short stemmed, so I don't know what I've done wrong there. Um, and then more Estrantias, and then Achillea the Pearl. Um, Actually, I shouldn't have, but I bought this in from the cottage garden and I shouldn't have because of the bindweed in there. So I'm really praying to God I didn't bring any bindweed in with me. Um, Achillea, um, some autumn sown Facelia, um, a fever foo here. And then turning around, uh, bronze fennel on the end with a few nigella. This is my sage. 
I've got oregano here and I've got another patch of oregano so I'm thinking about Chelsea chopping one patch just to stagger the flowers a little bit. A few of Agastache survived the winter um, but not the whole lot so in fact I actually just stuck some Phacelia seeds in here when the Agastache wasn't coming up. Um, there's a few more there. This is a, just a wild flower which was in the meadow and I always leave it because it is a great cut flower. It's just a sow nut, it's called. Um, it's really sweet, it's really short stem, but I just let that come up. Um, there's a few more bits coming up here and over there. Um, scabious, these are summer fruits. Um, another succession of corn flowers. Some slightly bigger, better. Lavateria and some Phacelia, which I just took a risk and I just chopped it down now um, to see if it will branch out. Um, I don't know if it will. Oh, look, a baby fever food there. And then Euphorbia here. Um, this is just my time. I don't, don't use my time for cutting, but I use it in cooking. Um, I tried to grow some new rosemaries because I've got rosemaries in my cottage garden but I'm not sure they're going to like it there. Uh, I've got toe flaxes to su survive that side of the bed, but I've got a big bear patch here, so I've got this tray of toe flax babies that I need to plant out. Um, oh yeah, Lismachia here and here. And I did have Lismachia in the middle as well, but for some reason that didn't make it. Here are the Galeolis I need to move when they finish flowering to join the others. Um, this is the second patch of oregano, so I'll definitely Chelsea chop one patch. Um, and then these are the slightly bigger Rebecca Saharas here, um, which are looking really good actually. Um, and then I've just filled in the holes with a few babies, just so that I haven't got any bare patches. And then more Achillea, more Feverfu, more Euphorbia, probably should have pinched that out. Um, Aquilegia. We've got, um, this is pink petticoats. I remember growing that one from seed. A lot of these are just hybridised. Um, this will be um, Sea Holly, Lamb's and my um, GU uh, Lady Stratton when it grew up, grew it from seed. Lovely stems, a bit bright yellow. Um, and then this is the one everyone loves, Mai Tai, and that color is amazing, but the stems are, mm, I mean, you could maybe get it in a bride bouquet because they have quite short stems, but I don't think you'd get it in a bouquet for a vase. Oh, we just pull this bit of bracken out. There we are, get rid of that. And then over here are the Dianthus parents, where I took all my cuttings from. So you can see, obviously, these have got far more stems because um, they're the mummies and daddies. And then a bit more sweet rocket, some cow parsley back here, a bit more cow parsley, and more false gloves. And then along here, I got um, these poppies, they're the um, Icelandic poppies and this one was sown last year so I really was expecting wonderful things and perhaps it's because I've got it too much in the shade, it, um, it's tiny and then this was a spring sown one and here spring sown, spring sown, spring sown so maybe they'll do something next year, we'll have to wait and see, oh there's a fever fee there as well Okay, so uh, this is where I move my daffodils to to die down. And then I've just got a whole load more snapdragons in front there. So these are the areas of grass that we won't mow. Um, mainly buttercups, but a few years ago I seeded yellow rattle in here. Um, this is the yellow rattle here um, and you can see I've got some lovely red clover and things like that in here 
I sewed a Devon Meadow mix in here with the yellow rattle. Um, so it should all be things that would be native to these grasslands originally. But I have to confess that when I dug up the sting nettles back here, I did put down just a generic wildflower seed. But actually, it doesn't really look like it took anyway um so i'm not sure what will happen with these bare patches they'll probably get really weedy i did get some um coronation seed um you know charles and camilla but the trouble is it's a bit late to sow it now um i'll have a look at the packet and see what it says but um got there are other things just slowly starting to establish in here um so we've got lady smock here um, and you can just see a sea of yellow rattle there which is great um, just loads of the field buttercup. Um, oh, my personal favourite is definitely the red clover. Um, oh, I shouldn't be walking on this. But I've made big footprints in it now. Um, here's the red clover coming through here. I just love that. And then obviously some little daisies. But um, hopefully over the years it will really establish thank you so much for watching this week's video um i hope you like a tour um let me know if tours are good or if i'm doing too many tours or not enough tours um obviously i'm new to this youtube channel um i know i like watching tours of other people's gardens um but you know if i'm making the tour too long or not in detail enough um I'd be grateful for any tips or if it's fine as it is then I'll just carry on doing it and um, so next week we'll have a look at the cottage garden um, that should be looking tip top by then um, just trying to keep on top of the bindweed at the moment um, which is just basically every day I'm going out and taking up the baby bits um, and let me know how your gardens are coming on and I'll see you next week in the cottage garden hopefully for some beautiful weather like we're having this weekend.